Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to develop our musical vocabulary. And in order to do that, we will need an understanding of the elements of music and how to talk about them. So we're going to discuss pitch and rhythm today and try and understand foundationally what those two elements of music do and why they're so important. Pitch is simply the sound of a note. When we name pitch, we use one of the first seven letters of the alphabet. Those letters are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Pitch is based on the frequency of a vibration. So what that means is the sound of a note, the pitch it is called, is strictly based on how fast or how slow a musical instrument or the mechanism inside that instrument is vibrating. So the faster the vibration of a string, let's say, the higher the pitch. The slower the vibration of a string, the lower the pitch. So pitch is the sound of a note depending on the speed of vibrations. Pitches are named with the first seven letters of the alphabet. Frequency is the speed of the vibration produced and is measured in hertz. So pitch is related to frequency because frequency determines the pitch. And then when we talk about instruments or a voice and we think of how many notes that voice or instrument can hit from lowest to highest, we talk about a range. I have a low voice, so my range is in the lower register or lower octaves of the keyboard, which we will go on to understand next. Before you move on from this, I would like you to watch this video explaining pitch. It will go in more detail about frequency and more detail about the naming of pitch. All right, so here is our term octave. And an octave is a set of eight notes starting and ending with the same pitch name. The term octave can be used to refer to the distance between two pitches that have the same letter name and are related in frequency. So you, let's look at how an octave looks on paper. This is the treble clef. Here is middle C. We can see eight notes. And the note at the last set of this repeats in pitch name. What has changed is the position on the staff. The higher position on the staff, the higher pitch the lower the position on the staff, the lower pitch. Let me move my face real quick. This is how an octave looks on a keyboard. Notice how each octave is classified by number. So here we will see a group of eight keys in purple, and this is labeled octave three. And right here is the note C. The color purple in this goes through a set of seven notes until it reaches the eighth, which is also a C. And we'll start the blue octave. As we move through, you'll see a pitch of seven, a series of seven notes. And on the eighth note, the C will repeat, and then we will start a green octave. Now obviously the piano is not colored like this, but I want you to focus on the amount of keys that are there. There are 12 keys, but eight pitches, okay? And each group is given a number. So this one is saying octave three, this is saying octave four, this is saying octave five. Furthermore, you'll notice 
that your pitches have numbers. So below octave four, it says C4 through B4. Below octave five, it says C5 through B5. And below octave three, it says C3 through B3. These numbers are important because they help us identify in which octave or in which register notes are. This note is C4, making this note C5. And all the notes inside of this octave are a part of the four register. We're going to learn more about register now. So when we talk about register, we're talking about how high or how low a pitch is in relationship to the other pitches. Considering music only uses the first few letters of the alphabet, a number is used to indicate register. And we can use these numbers to off the bat tell which note would be higher or lower than the other. For example, C4 is higher than C2. C4 is higher than C2. If this was a piano, the strings that were in this register would be a lot longer and thicker than the strings on the rest of the piano. As we follow the C's, we can see that middle C is C4 because the end of the keyboard is C8. The beginning of the keyboard, if it is an 88 key keyboard, will start with A0 because those are extended range pitches. But typically, on a 61 key keyboard or something like that, you'll see the note starting at C1. And you'll notice that they're the lowest pitches. And all the notes, all the white keys in this register have the one next to them, and then the number changes once the octave is achieved at C2, right? So from C1 to C2, the distance is an octave. And an octave will refer to that distance, and it will also refer to if those two notes were played together. When two notes are played together, that gives us something very special called harmony. So octave can be a description of a type of harmony as well. We're going to move on to tempo. And tempo is simply put the speed of music. In classical music, there was a more open-ending, open-ended interpretation of what tempo could be. So composers used these terms. These terms are still used today to help describe music when it refers to tempo, when it refers to classical music, essentially. However, certain elements are used universally through different music. For instance, a tempo would mean let's return to the normal tempo, tempo of the song. If you were practicing it slow with a band, you'd say let's play this a little bit more slowly and then return to tempo. So you'd say, all right, everyone, we're going to take this off tempo now. Let's say you wanted to create a part that slowly got faster. You'd say, we're gonna do an accelerando here. If you wanted to make a part gradually get slower, you would say retardando or rallentando, right? So some of these terms are helpful when you're composing or when you're in the field making music with people. In modern music, we talk about tempo still in terms of beats per minute, as in the speed of music, so the definition has not changed. However, the expectation is a bit more strict and out of the interpretation of the artists. So in modern music, tempo is written as a number and a note value. A metronome is a tool musicians use to count beats in order to practice precision with their time. So you can program this number of beats per minute with a note value in a metronome, and that'll create a beat for you to play with. What a beat is, 
The beat is a steady pulse that all sound is organized around. The beat of a song is usually compared to a heartbeat because without a steady pulse, the music would either stop or be erratic. So on the right, we're going to look at a metronome marking. And this is saying that a quarter note, a quarter note is typically the unit of one beat, will move at a speed of 120 beats per minute. So that's double the speed of the second hand on your clock, if you want a point of reference. When we talk about rhythm, we talk about a pattern of sound and silence. So rhythm is created when there's a pattern of different note values or note durations. So when we look at this chart, we're trying to understand the different symbols that represent different amounts of beats. We'll notice here that the quarter note will usually receive one beat. If we move up the hierarchy, we can see the figure with an open space in the note head is a half note, and that is worth two beats. And then when we move up further, we'll see that a whole note, which is just a note head, is worth four beats. So we're going to see how these note values are related to each other. When we move down the hierarchy, we start to see how the notes relate to each other as well, but now by smaller values. So when we go down from the quarter note, we'll see that an eighth note looks like a quarter note, but has an additional flag on it, and that is now worth half a beat. And then furthermore, the 16th note, which looks like the eighth note, but with an additional flag on it, is worth a quarter of a beat. Let's look at this rhythm tree to better understand it. So up here, you see our whole note, which would be counted like this. One. So imagine that the snaps are the clicks of a metronome. Two, three, four. One. One. That's a whole note. A half note would happen twice as frequently within that four clicks. So you'd have one, two, one, two. A quarter note would happen twice as frequently as the half note. So each beat would get marked. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And this is how rhythm and note values work within a pulse or a beat. We'll continue to learn more about the eighth notes and sixteenth notes, but for now, I would like that concept to stick. Please watch this video for a deeper explanation.